Hi and welcome to this week's Something for the Weekend. I'm Tony here at Martin Lynch and Sons. Uh, today we've got something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be trying to capture the images that are coming down from the ISS uh, today uh, in the showroom. So we're going to be using a simple setup, basically a V2000 uh, with an IC9700 and just a regular Windows PC. So we'll see how we get on and I'm going to send you over to Jonathan now who's going to go through initial setup business. Thanks Tony, so we're just going to run through a few bits on the IC9700 and in the software MMSS TV. Um, which is a free download. There's nothing you have to pay for here apart from the radio, I suppose. Uh, but in terms of software, nothing you have to pay for. All absolutely free. Now, you're going to need yourself a USB cable. This is just a USB type B to type A cable. It's the same square type connector that your printer might use. Um, if you've got them one laying about already, you can use that. Uh, if you need to grab one from us, we do keep them in stock. Um, so all I'm going to do is very simply, it's already connected to the computer end. I'm just going to connect it into the radio, which is just on the back. Um, so there we go. That's that's the radio plugged in to the uh, to the computer. Um, and now in the radio, really, there's only a couple of things that we need to make sure we've done. The first is we need to make sure we're on the right frequency. For the ISS, um, with the SSTV stuff, it's on 145.800. Uh, um, if we were to transmit as well, we'd want to make sure that we're getting the, um, the audio from the right port. So uh, going through uh, menu, set, connectors. Uh, this is where we just basically need to do everything in here and make sure we're all set up right. So if we go to mod input, and we've got data mod as USB, that's correct. And while we're in here, we could just check data off mod, mic and ACC. That's right. We shouldn't need to mess with any of the other levels to be completely honest with you. Um, if you were gonna do anything with um, over the, the LAN connector, you might wanna go in there and add uh, the LAN port in. We're not going to, we're just gonna leave it as USB. Uh, the other thing we're just gonna quickly do is go into the CIV settings. Just, you might want to make a note of the CIV address of the radio. Again, this more comes into if you're going to start transmitting uh, data modes and, uh, and SSTV. We're not today, we're only going to do receiving, so we don't need to pay too much attention to this, but it is just worth noting the CIV address and also the fact we're on an, a, uh, an auto board right there as well. Uh, so that's basically it. The other thing we want to do is just make sure that we're in uh, FM, which we are, and we also want to make sure we're on FM data. Uh, which you do by hitting FM again and then clicking data. And it comes up just at the top there as FMD. That's, we want to do that because otherwise you'll be potentially um, adjusting the audio response of the radio. Sometimes you can set up just sort of different audio shifts um, in order to make it sound nice to the ear. We don't want to be doing that to a data signal. We want it to be the purest signal out of the radio as we possibly get by putting it into data mode. That's what we do. Also worth noting that if you want to transmit, because we've just set up that data mod or data modulation as USB, we want to make sure it's in that mode as well. Next thing we're going to do is just go over to the, the computer because so there are just a couple of things. It's not a lot we need to set up over here to be completely honest with you for receive. It'd be a bit more in depth if we were to do some transmitting, but we're just going to go to option uh, and we're going to go to setup MMSS TV. Um, and then all we want to do is in this MISC up here, we just make sure that we have got the, um, uh, the correct sound card selected. So for us here, uh, the input is the uh, USB audio codec and the output uh, is the same. Everything else we can basically leave as it is. Uh, if you were to start playing around with um, uh, transmit, you can change your transmit settings there. As I say, we're not doing that today, so we don't need to bother with it, uh, but it is just worth noting that. Now the final thing you probably want to do before the pass happens is say RX mode to PD120 and if you were to, that will start trying to decode and if you then right click um, you will probably want to enable auto restart, auto resync and auto slant adjustment. That's, um, those three are important because with that will, when it starts hearing the tones at the start of a pass it will um, start the decode right from the top again. Uh, it will also then also keep the image straight because of the Doppler effect. Often you can see quite a slanted image by uh, putting the auto resync and auto slant adjustment that will keep the picture as straight as possible, as straight as the algorithms in the software can do it. One 
Quick thing before we bring Tony in, uh, there's a, a useful web page um, that NASA has on their website which uh, will show you where the International Space Station is currently and also where it can see. So if I just uh, get rid of um, the, uh, the software for the moment, um, if, uh, if you go to this URL up here which is spotthestation.nasa.gov forward slash tracking underscore map dot cfm, it brings you up this page here. Um, with this sort of live tracking view. And what you can also do uh, is make that full screen. So you'll see uh, we use that um, when we're trying to decode things just to make sure that we're still within the green circle. And that green circle is where on Earth uh, the, you, the space station can be seen from and where the, where the space station can see. Um, so that's, that's also worth noting. Uh, whilst I've got a web browser up, uh, I'll just also take you to um, the MMSS TV download page as well. Uh, it's quite simple. If you use your, your favorite web browser uh, and your favorite search engine, if you just type in MMSS TV, uh, if I could uh, put the correct number of S's in there, there we go, MMSS TV, and it's this one here, it's um, hamsoft.ca, um, and uh, it's uh, you just want to click on download, and it's that first one there. The latest version is uh, 1.13a. Um, and that's uh, that'll be uh, all good to go. And now we'll grab Tony back in and we will do a pass and see if uh, we can decode anything. Well, thank you for doing the setup there, Jonathan. It looks really easy. It is really easy. It's just one USB cable that okay. you need yeah. and just a couple of settings to make sure it's selected on the radio. But other than that, with the 9700, it is a doddle. Yeah, is that sort of the same with most of the modern radios now of USB Mo connection? Most modern radios do have a USB connection mm -hmm. now. So if you want to do SSTV, say on, on HF, that most of the HF radios available in the market now do have a USB okay. port. And for someone like myself who hasn't moved with the times, as they say. You're still running an 817, aren't you? I am, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so you could use uh, either a Signalink USB, yeah. uh, which is really nice, but it will only give you the audio and PTT okay. control. Uh, if you wanted to do CAT control as well, then you need a, an SCU17. Okay, but on the receive side, it's just a, an audio link, basically. Exactly, that's all you need. Side. Okay, that's fine. And I'm fine with my, my uh, V2000. Fine with the V2000, absolutely. They work with a nice antenna. There's Great. one going off in my house as well. Um, I believe as well you can do this with a handheld transceiver or receiver. You can do. So if you're well. so just receiving, you can use a handheld transceiver and even mm -hmm. there's a few mobile phone apps as well, so you can just hold the mobile phone up to the speaker. That's great. And well, that often works too. We'll look out for the next parts. <laughs> oh, here we go. And for those that know, don't know, this is the Telltale audio of SSTV. And uh, we're running in PD120 mode, which is slightly faster mode than what they used to use before. So fingers crossed we should be okay. I can almost make out the call sign at the top there. So the pass at the moment uh, that we're expecting is around about 82 degrees. So and I think it's, a, it's around about a 10 minute open window. Yeah. So fingers crossed we should get some images through. Um, as you said, we are only running the vertical antenna at the moment. Yeah, if we had a little beam pointed at it, it'd be a bit better, but... Yeah. Something's only appearing on the screen. It's a nice method with the, the software um, MM SSTV in the fact that you can do the auto mode. So if you're not too sure, because obviously on HF we're normally using Scotty mode. Yes. You know, majority of the time, especially in the States, etc. So there we go, the image is coming through. Starting to get clearer as obviously it arcs over. Yeah, we've tried a few times, I believe they're going to be leaving the repeater on for a bit longer now as well, which is... They are, so... It's also worth looking at what mode the ISS is running in for amateur radio because it's not just SSTV all the time. Uh, there's also, as you say, the, the FM yeah. repeater. And your digi repeater as well. Is that still running? So the did, they don't, yeah, so they don't run all the modes at the same time. So they'll generally run one of the three. So if they're running mm. SSTV, uh, they might not necessarily be running uh, the FM repeater or, um, or the digi repeater, but they're normally running one of them. Uh, so it's always worth checking with um, ARIS, A-R-I-S-S, -S, uh, to find out what mode is currently being used. Okay, which is great. And obviously join AMSAT as well. Yeah, AMSAT is also a, a, a wealth of knowledge when it comes not just yeah. to uh, the ISS, but all of the other amateur uh, satellites too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great point um, if you're trying to promote amateur radio to sort of the younger people. Yeah. It's just to say to them, you can speak to the astronauts, you, you know, can, exactly. The option is there, and you will get the crew that do actually call down um, on their downtime. Yeah, so they often. Know, yeah, again, check the forums, join the forums. There's a great um, ISS forum which tells you their downtime schedule, etc. And the best time to call, you know, start calling before it comes up from the horizon. 
obviously don't run stupid power. No. If you've got a beam antenna, superb, you know, like a duo sat for example, duo be perfect for yeah, it. Absolutely. So you've got um, 600 KC split, I believe. Uh, uh, so yes, yeah. Two hundred on the calling frequencies. Yeah, so they norm so they transmit one four five eight hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is one four five two hundred. So not bad results, really. No, not bad results at all. I'm very happy with that mm. actually. Yeah, for I mean for a vertical antenna, I thought we've done quite well. Again, as we mentioned earlier, if you do really want to go for a sort of a direct approach, yeah, GeoSat antenna, absolutely perfect. Great choice, and I mean you can find that sort of readily available from the website, etc. and yeah. Exactly, and Duracell's also really nice because with the duplex, you can start transmitting up to the FM satellites too, yeah. and there's a whole load of them orbiting your head right now. Yeah, so take it easy, enjoy your weekend, and uh, hit the birds. 7-3.